Okay, so next on stage is Priyanka uh, Ningaresu. Priyanka is a space systems engineering graduate from ISAE Supaero in Toulouse. And previously she has worked for four years at CAE India for civil aircraft flight simulations. So she's going to present the, uh, how do you pronounce, the OSA or DOSA or DOSA. So she's going to present DOSA, which is a dynamic link budget tool designed to provide a better visualization of link parameters as compared to classical static link budgets. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, start? Can I start? Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm here to present uh, a little different way of looking at classical link budgets. So just for people uh, who are not very clear about link budgets, what is a link budget? The most simplest uh, explanation for that is accounting for all the uh, gains and losses that you encounter in a communication link when the signal is going from a transmitter to a receiver. The more power we receive at the receiver, the more data we can receive. So if we look at a typical gain loss profile of a signal, uh, we see that the maximum loss that is encountered is because of the free space loss, the free space loss or the path loss. And to see why that occurs, two important parameters, the range and elevation angle. Range is simply the distance between uh, the Earth station and a satellite. And elevation angle is the angle that this vector makes with the local horizon of the ground station. So which means that uh, if, if you imagine uh, a ground station here, then if we have a satellite at the horizon, the elevation angle would be the lowest, which means the range would be the largest. And as the satellite moves above the ground station, the uh, elevation angle keeps increasing, which decreases the range and incidentally redu reduces the path loss. So which means that the worst case scenario of your signal is right at the horizon. And that's what static link budgets uh, perform. So static link budgets uh, perform all the calculations at the horizon where you have the worst case scenario of uh, an elevation angle of five to 10 degrees. A dynamic link budget on the other hand tries to compute the link budget at different points, uh, at different points in time as the satellite moves above the ground station. So um, the state of the art for su uh, such kind of tools, uh, there are two tools, uh, Satellite Toolkit by AGI and Telecom Forecaster Predictor by NASA, both of which perform a dynamic link budget. However, both, of th both these softwares rely on restricted software for orbit data and also they're not open source, so we don't care. Uh, the other sa uh, tool is the AMSAT link model which is the most commonly used uh, Excel sheet where you enter all your parameters to compute a link budget. However, this tool also uh, computes just a static link budget as opposed to the dynamic one that we're using. So uh, the tool that we present uh, does three things. It calculates a dynamic link budget. Uh, it enables you to view the different passes and try to identify the best passes and also visualize the available margins in your link budget. So for that, the input files that we require are orbit and attitude ephemeris message. Simply put, the OEM file provides you the position and velocity of the satellite at different instants in time in the orbit. And the AEM file provides you the orientation of the satellite as it moves. So with this basic, uh, we recompute the free space loss. The equation for this free space loss is taken directly from the static link budgets. The only change that we do here is we compute the range differently. So in a static link budget, the range is just taken as the distance between the satellite and the station. Whereas in the dynamic link budget, we take the vector uh, going from the satellite to the ground station. 
So as the satellite keeps moving, this vector changes. And incidentally, now the range becomes a function of time, which means your free space loss is now a function of time. And so now we can calculate the loss as the satellite goes above the ground station for the entire pass duration. The next uh, loss that we'd like to compute is the pointing loss. And for that, we look at the antenna gain pattern. So the, antenna, the gain of an antenna uh, is different at different points around the antenna. So if you take any point around the antenna, it has an azimuth and an elevation angle with respect to the antenna base frame. So knowing these two angles, we, uh, the gain pattern provides uh, a gain for every azimuth and elevation. So now what we're trying to do is that uh, as the satellite points towards the ground station, uh, instead of assuming a static gain, we try to compute a dynamic gain. So what you see here is uh, a satellite with a directional antenna, and uh, the antenna pattern is not exactly facing the ground station. Uh, as in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the antenna pattern, the maximum value of the gain is not facing the ground station, but we still get a reduced gain uh, at the uh, ground, ground station. So what we try to do here is compute the satellite station vector and then try to see the angle, the azimuth and the elevation angle within the antenna base frame. So now we are able to see the reduced gain that we can see at the ground station. So to do that, we use the orbit ephemeris message, which provides you the um, uh, satellite and station uh, vectors. With that, we compute the, uh, the vector going from the satellite to the ground station. And this is done first in the initial uh, EME 2000 frame, which is an Earth-centered coordinate frame. And once we have this, then we combine this with the quaternions that we get from the satellite um, attitude ephemeris. And now we have the satellite station vector within the antenna frame, uh, sorry, within the satellite frame. And once we are in the satellite frame, we can try to find the angle that this vector makes with the main axis of the antenna. And so we can compute the azimuth and elevation angles of the, uh, with respect to the antenna base frame. And once we have that, we interpolate this value to get the required gain uh, at those particular, uh, along this satellite station vector. So now the gain has also become a function of time, which varies as the satellite passes over the ground station So with this, we look at the uh, link budget equation. And when we see the link budget equation, we see now that the free space loss and the antenna gain have both become a function of time, which means the, the received signal to noise power, uh, noise power ratio that the link budget calculates is now a function of time. Similarly, for the bit energy to noise power density ratio, because of the C by N uh, becoming a function of time, we also have the energy to uh, noise power spectral density as a function of time. Uh, I come back to the Doppler effect uh, if we have time in the end. So we performed a case study for the ISAT, which is uh, a satellite uh, project of CST uh, designed to observe the Milky Way uh, noise. So what we compute, what the uh, two computes are very simple graphs of this sort. So the first peak that you see is the first pass. Uh, this duration is done for 30,000 seconds. Uh, we requested the uh, attitude and uh, orbit control system to provide us the OEM and AEM files. So this goes on for 30,000 seconds. And in that, we see there are two passes. And in the first pass, we see that the maximum elevation angle is 36.3 degrees, not the best, but compared to the second pass that we get, uh, it's fairly better. And we see that the free space loss varies from a minimum of minus, uh, sorry, minimum of 157.4 all the way up to 165. That's about seven to eight dB of uh, variation. Uh, this was 
started using the VTS simulation tool uh, to make sure that we are observing the passes correctly. Uh, come back to this. So with this, when we look at the uh, C by N uh, variations, we see that the C by N vari uh, maximum value is about 72 dB. Now the receiver requires a minimum uh, signal to uh, carrier to noise power ratio for to properly intercept the signal. And that for our receiver was about 10 dB. So which means now we have a margin of close to 62 dB. Same for the second pass, we again have a, a fairly high margin. So what, uh, I'm sorry. When we compute the same uh, calculations for the energy per bit to noise ratio, we again observe that, uh, so the minimum energy to uh, energy per bit to noise ratio is given based on the mod type of modulation technique and the coding technique that you wish to have. So to, for that we require a minimum of 2.4 dB, but what we see is that we actually have a maximum of 40 dB. So we have a fairly high margin. So the idea here is that with a tool like this, you can see multiple passes and you can see the different margins that are available at each and every pass. And then you can try to identify the best passes and try to change the bit rate for the best passes. So when you have a really high margin, you can try to download more data by changing the data rate. And for the lower ones, you can leave it as it is. So that's the goal of uh, this kind of a dynamic tool. So the future work that we are uh, currently performing on this is to build a GUI user interface for the tool because right now it's just code and we are updating the user in uh, inputs in code. We'd like to build a GUI for that. And we'd like to provide a Celeste Lab code uh, so that when you do not have the OEM and AEM files uh, at the start of a mission, you can try to generate them yourself uh, using the Celeste Lab tool. So to recap, the DOSA tool basically computes a dynamic link budget. It allows you to see different passes and identify the best passes uh, that are available and also try to see the different margins available for each of your passes. So the paper that is referenced here uh, provides you an algorithm to uh, choose the optimum bit rate when you have a dynamic link budget like this. So this could be a possible future work to try to continue on this. So I thank you for your attention and I welcome any questions. Yes, thank you for your presentation. Um, mm -hmm. My kind of, sh first a short question. My question will be about the noise. Uh, in, your, in your equation you were talking about the EBNO, but you were saying that only the gains are changing, but uh, also the noise floor and noise figure is always changing. Especially if you are the person who has been ever pointing this antenna to the sky, you know that the uh, noise I, from the directly. I'm so yes. I'm so sorry. Could you please repeat a little slower? I could not understand. Uh, yes. Really so sorry. my question is about the noise. Okay. So uh, every operator who has been ever operating a uh, satellite dish, uh, he or she knows that the noise floor, when pointing to the directly the azimuth, is much lower mm -hmm. than what is in the in the horizon. Right. So also the noise floor. Is, uh, uh, is changing over time, and it can be a huge change, sev uh, well, several decibels at least. So do you have any plans to model the noises coming from the ionosphere, from the okay. atmosphere, and they changes to the link budget? Uh, as of now, we do not have it, but there is a possibility to try to model it. So this is a base for, um, uh, a dynamic link budget. And as we go ahead, like we can try to model uh, any of the uh, parameters that we want in a more dynamic way. So currently we don't have the plans for that, but it is an option for the future. Okay, next question. <laughs> Hi, uh, you mentioned something about uh, the antenna and the pointing loss losses, right? right. Uh, so you take as input the, the antenna polar uh, coordinates and uh, with a gain and uh, you calculate it 
or, or you calculate it uh, with a net core, with an antenna simulator, let's say. Uh, so you had a plot with a, the, with a simple dipole? Uh, sorry, which diagram? Uh, with, a, uh, with an antenna pattern, with a gain of the, with the antenna pattern. Uh, ah, okay. Backwards. Yeah. Okay. So you calculate this, or you take this um, as input and... So, uh, the antenna gain pattern uh, is actually measured by the communication system engineer. So when they receive an antenna, they perform gain measurements on this. Uh, and then they provide us an Excel sheet, which uh, gives you three columns, which is the azimuth, elevation, and the gain. So what we have used for this example was from, for, from the iSight project. But uh, if you do not have a file like this, you can always, uh, if, you, if the mission is already ongoing, you can get it from your communication systems engineer. Uh, and if it's preliminary mission analysis, then we can try, you can try to find uh, a gain pattern for, uh, uh, I think you have uh, gain patterns available online for different antenna types. The idea that we were trying to go for here is to eliminate antenna gain type. So now all you have is an Excel sheet which gives you azimuth, elevation, and gain. So your antenna can be anything that you want, but the gain pattern format remains the same. So you just feed that into the tool, and so you can use it for different types of antennas. Okay, so you're using the OAM file, which is basically a, a list of the state vectors yes. to define the, the orbit um, state. Um, but this is pre-computed, so you're fixed to, for, to this uh, orbit then. Mm -hmm. So did you also consider to use other models like TLE, which you can actually then forward propagate? And that would make it easier if you change mm -hmm. something, then you don't have to generate a file, but you just propagate the, uh, the TLE and the orbit. Did you think about uh, using something else than OEM? Uh, no, as of now we went with the OEM because that was uh, the standard files that were available and they're in the CCSDS format. And we had a Celeste Lab tool which was able to generate uh, orbit propagation data for us uh, for preliminary mission analysis. So that's the reason we have chosen uh, to go with OEM and AEM files instead of TLE data. Okay. Uh, my next question is for the audience. So who is um, operating a ground station? Okay. Oh, not so many. But uh, of those, um, do you actually, uh, like, how does it work? How do you size your antenna? Is it, okay, the other one did like this, so I do it as well. And then when you track a satellite, does it happen that you don't receive a signal or the signal is very low and you did not expect it? Or do you do some worst case calculations before? I'm just, I'm asking because I would like to know how valuable such a dynamic tool would be for you. Any comments? Yeah, so I think mostly, at least for my part, we do a st or a worst case calculations and uh, we, we find that uh, in particular we're using link spreadsheets uh, and have to uh, assess atmospheric losses and polarization and things like that. It's, it, we end up with uh, oversizing the link budget. <laughs> so uh, a dynamic tool would be very nice to have, which you can simulate uh, and uh, have more realistic uh, ex uh, scenarios. Thank you. Classic engineer approach, yeah. Calculate and then multiply <laughs> with a constant, yeah. Actually, we have a similar tool uh, that runs uh, on the GNU radio. So instead of uh, uh, your approach, we use the TLEs, as uh, uh, Arthur mentioned, and uh, you can uh, have a prediction of uh, several days when uh, the you, you specify a ground station, your satellite TLEs, and uh, you can uh, run the simulation for many days, years even, even and uh, uh, when the satellite is in the range of uh, your, uh, your ground station, it starts injecting, injecting the Doppler effect, uh, all the stuff that we have already calculated. And of course, it is in the GNU radio, so you can uh, do uh, prototyping or you can check if uh, your transceivers work pretty uh, correctly and uh, 
also check uh, your bit error rate, what you have to expect on, uh, during your mission. So check it out. Okay. Uh, what was the name of your tool? GR Leo. It's on uh, LibreSpace Foundation uh, okay. uh, Git repository on GitLab. So take a look at it. Okay. Uh, just a comment that uh, even in this tool, uh, you can try to uh, propagate the data for many number of days uh, based on the AEM and the OEM files that you provide.